Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Sound Strategies. I'm your host, Robert, and today we're gonna shine a spotlight on one of my favorite mixing tools, saturation. If there's one tool in the music production tool belt that you should know about, it's saturation. But before we get into this week's video, I'd like to encourage you to support this channel by subscribing and click the little bell below to get notifications about new videos each week. Saturation is a very simple tool that can quickly add life and flavor to dull recordings. It can thicken up drums into monstrous proportions and add attitude and presence to bass instruments and pretty much add a unique character to just about everything else. So saturation is the perfect tool for shaping your mix into a masterpiece. It works by adding extra harmonics to the recorded sound. Now these harmonics are added as subharmonics or overtones, which are whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency. The result is a much richer timbre and a more interesting sound. Sometimes this is referred to as harmonic distortion. So most plugins and outboard gear add harmonic distortion to some degree. The pattern, order, and amount of harmonics added determine the gear's unique color. So some compressors and preamps are very transparent or discreet, where others are heavily colored by harmonic distortion. Most home studio gear is, however, quite transparent and will likely result in a rather boring and dull recording. So in a commercial recording studio, the engineer will use the available preamps as a palette to paint the performance in a certain color based on the characteristics of the instrument and the genre to help everything fit into the mix. So during my internship, I got to patch in a whole bunch of different input lists that had similar signal flows. So it's really common to see drums going into the Neve 1073, going to the 1176, or the guitars patched into the API, or running the vocalist through the Tube Tech compressor. Okay, there was all these specific colors that the engineers would work out on different instruments to fit them into the mix uh, and shape them to their desire. So in this lesson, I'm going to share with you some of the ways that I use saturation in the box and the benefits that it can bring to a mix. So let's head over to Pro Tools and get started. We can demonstrate the effect saturation has by adding a signal generator onto a blank audio track. So here we have a one kilohertz sine wave. And if I bring up this Blue Cat Frequency Analyst, which is a free plugin, we can see the sine wave is the simplest form of oscillation. It only contains the fundamental frequency of one kilohertz and nothing else. Other waveforms like the saw or the square wave contain different patterns of overtones that make them more complex and different in timbre. So we can make the sine wave more complex by using saturation to add some higher order harmonics to the signal. We'll begin by using a piece of vintage hardware. I'm going to bring in this LA4 compressor limiter and then lower the threshold until it starts to compress the signal. And as you can see on the analyzer, it's adding in some extra information there. So if I crank the output level, we can see all of those additional peaks of different overtones that are being added by the unit. So next I'll cycle through the ratio and you can see the different order and intensity of all of those overtones. Look at all of them and they're different with each ratio. So next we'll recreate this inside of the box. Instead of our hardware insert, I'm going to add my favorite free saturation plugin, the saturation knob by Softube. We're starting with our same Blue Cat Frequency Analyst, and when I bring up the saturation level, you can start to see all of those added harmonics begin to show up. Now, of course, this is a saturation plugin, so its effect is much more pronounced than the hardware unit. As we cycle through the saturation type, we start to get a different bias of the order of harmonics. So in the keep high setting, we have a greater exaggeration of the higher order harmonics. And in the keep low setting, we have an increase in the subharmonics that add some extra push to the low end. So 
So let's apply this plugin to one of the tracks in our mix. We'll begin with the kick drum track and use the keep low setting. So I'll play the track and bring up the saturation level to hear what this plugin can add. Yeah, so you can really hear the kick start to cut through the mix. It has more low end and an aggressive tone. So often the clean and dry recordings end up sounding boring in the mix and the energy can get lost behind a wall of guitars and all the other layers going on. So the extra high frequency information makes the sound catch our ears attention more easily while the subharmonic adds extra oomph to the low end. Next, we'll see what happens when we use saturation on the snare drum. I'll loop an area with a drum fill and start by listening to the track with the saturation knob bypassed. Come on, toes, come on, touch what you Okay, so in that small little segment, our snare peaked at around minus four decibels. So now let's engage the saturation and turn it up a bit and have a listen. So minus 6.4 decibels. That's about two dB less than before. Now, this is really cool because with the saturation, we're getting a greater perceived loudness while also getting a lower peak volume. So this reminds me of one of my first guitar lessons. I brought in a distortion pedal and I asked my guitar teacher, what does it do? How do I use it? And what he got me to do was we matched the volume between the bypass signal and then the distorted signal. And the teacher told me to go outside the room. And what he did, he would play with it bypassed and you could hear the signal. And then when he turned it on, that distorted one was much quieter. And I thought this was really strange. I thought, okay, well, what gives? And what he told me is that distortion breaks up the waveform, which removes the concentration of energy, which causes it to diminish faster. Uh, now, this may seem like a bad thing, but we aren't mixing for the people outside the room, okay? It's, it's fine to add distortion. In fact, Doing so is actually going to allow you to gain a little bit of extra headroom as the peaks of the waves are shaved off in a unique style of soft compression. So even stock plugins do this. I am a big fan of analog gear. Personally, I, I love the tactile sensation of turning knobs and moving faders. You know, maybe like an ADHD thing, but having buttons and knobs is a lot more satisfying than consistently just clicking a mouse. But that being said, there are some huge benefits to digital music production, and I still use plugins in every mix. So I bring up this whole analog versus digital argument because there's always someone who has to hate on digital and say that digital doesn't add anything and stock plugins are for noobs, etc. But even the basic plugins within your DAW are going to add some kind of character to your music. Let me demonstrate. So here I have a couple of the stock compressors that come with Pro Tools. And we still have our Blue Cat Analyst showing our one kilohertz sine wave. Now I'm going to demonstrate the added harmonic distortion that this stock compressor will add to the signal. So we'll start by making sure that the threshold is low enough to compress. And I'll crank up the gain so we can see what's going on above the fundamental. And we can see some harmonics already starting to show up. So next, as I increase the ratio, you can begin to see them dancing around there. See how the overtones change with the ratio as the compression becomes more intense. So let's test this out on another compressor. I'll bypass the old one and engage this 1176 emulation that comes stock with Pro Tools. With this model, I'll crank the input gain stage so we can see, oh, we can see one little harmonic popping up there and I'll increase the output gain so we can see them a little bit better. And then as I cycle through the different ratios, we again get different combinations of these overtones. We can even shift click on the ratio to get British mode or all buttons in and see a few of the harmonics shown here. 
So what this means is you don't need to go out and buy an expensive analog compressor to have the benefits of added harmonic content. Learn to work with what you have available and avoid lusting over the gear that you don't have. Get good with the basics and then grow your palette slowly and carefully. Having said that, I want to know, what is your favorite saturation plugin and why? Let me know below in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson on saturation and if you have, I have much more to share with you. We learned how saturation is quite useful in its ability to add emphasis to your instruments. It's an essential part of mixing, but it's only one of the tools and we can do much more. Great mixing requires a combination of tools and a process to using those tools and techniques effectively. So for those of you who want to take your mixes to the next level and are looking to gain a comprehensive understanding of the mixing process and a system that teaches you how to use the tools that you already own to create better, more confident mixes, I've created a course that does all that. It's called the seven level essential mixing checklist. At the end of this course, you will know how to create outstanding mixes that stand out in clarity, depth, balance, vocal dominance, and actual low end. All by using the essential mixing tools you already have within your DAW. This course will equip you with the skills to be able to significantly improve your mixing process and release mixes that hold their own among the best. So check the description below for a link to the course page and scroll to the bottom to check out the sample lesson. It goes a bit further in depth about saturation, so you'll definitely want to check that out. And as always, thank you for watching this video and happy mixing.